Wouldn't it be great if the DJI FPV system had a DVR so you could record your flights without having to have a big, heavy action camera on your quad? Uh, there's already a DVR in the goggles, Joshua. Oh, right. The DJI goggles already have a DVR. But that DVR, it just is recording the video feed that gets back to you. So as the signal gets weaker, it gets all broken up. What if the DJI system had a DVR on board the quadcopter that records the actual feed that's coming out of the camera? So it's always perfect high resolution. Yeah, the DJI air unit already has that. All right. The air unit already does that. Wouldn't it be great if there was a DVR that you could add to your Cadex Vista VTX so you could record all that stuff w without having to put an air unit on your quad? And that's what this is. The Runcam Split HD. It's a DVR that you add to your Cadex Vista, which you bought because you wanted to save weight. That's why you didn't buy the air unit. But now you want a DVR, so you're willing to add a little bit of weight Run Cam Split HD. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The Run Cam Split HD that I'm reviewing in this video was sent to me by Run Cam. I did not purchase it with my own money. I have not received any cash or any other form of compensation in exchange for this video, and no one has had any pre-approval or conditions on the contents of this video before it was released. I try to approach every review from the perspective of helping the person for whom this is the right product figure that out, and helping the person for whom this is the wrong product figure that out so you can spend your money smarter. And as the intro to this video kind of hints at, that is a kind of a weird thing to do for the Runcam Split HD. Because if you want a DJI video transmitter with a DVR built in, the DJI Air Unit, or now it's called the Cadex Air Unit Micro, it has a built-in DVR with an SD card slot. But there are some problems there. Weight is the obvious one. This, a Vista plus this Air Unit light is gonna be a little bit lighter and certainly smaller than a full-size air unit. This will fit in a 20 millimeter, we've got 20 millimeter holes here, or 25 millimeter holes here on the outside, the exact same as the Cadex Vista. So you're gonna be able to fit this in some builds that the air unit wouldn't fit in, even if the weight is not actually that much different between them. But the big thing I think you're getting with the Runcam Split HD is, well, first of all, the DJI air unit uh, DVR kind of doesn't work. It has had this bug where you get this error message, SD card slow, as if you were using an old slow SD card that couldn't keep up with all the data that it was writing. But people have used really fast class 10 UHS-3 high-end SD cards and they still get SD card slow. It is commonly believed to be a firmware bug that DJI has not fixed and who knows when they will fix it. So frankly, I know a lot of people who consider the air unit DVR to be basically not non-existent. It's just not reliable and they don't count it as a plus. In that respect, we actually have here a DVR that works. So that's nice. But there's more going on here with the Runcam Split HD than just a Cadex Vista with a DVR. The Runcam Split HD records at up to 2.7K 60 resolution, whereas the DJI Air Unit or the Cadex Air Unit Micro, they're basically the same thing, they record only at up to 1080p resolution. So you're getting higher resolution. In addition, the uh, Runcam Split HD can record in both 4.3 and 16.9 uh, aspect ratio, whereas the DJI, well, it records on whatever your camera's doing, uh, more about the camera on this guy a little bit later in the video. Um, finally, the Runcam Split HD can record gyro data for use with the GyroFlow image stabilization program. And this is a big plus. I made a tutorial video showing that you can use GyroFlow uh, to stabilize any data as long as you have a black box recorder on your quad. You can take the gyro data from the black box recording and combine it with the camera video and stabilize that. But synchronizing the gyro data with the camera data is not trivial and doesn't always work well and can mean that your stabilization doesn't work as well as it can. The absolute best results with the gyro flow happen when the camera itself records the gyro data so that the gyro data is always perfectly synced with the video and the Runcam Split HD does that.
Uh, so if you're thinking about stabilization and you don't want to spend 80 or or $100 on something like Real Steady Go, Gyroflow is a free alternative that produces nearly as good results certainly adequate results, especially when you've got a setup like this where the camera is recording the gyro data. I'll put a link to my tutorial about Real Steady Go and, and Gyro Flow down in the video description if you're interested in checking that out. So this system has a few things going for it, but there are also some caveats that are going to steer you away. But before I tell you what those are, let's at least take a look at how it mounts in the quad and take a look at some flight footage and some video footage to see how the image quality is. Stick around though, because there's at least one solid deal breaker. So the way that the system is supposed to work is that you take your Caddx Vista and you disconnect the camera from it. And we're gonna do that by taking out this 1.5 millimeter screw here. And when that screw comes out, you'll be able to remove the retention tab on the MIPI cable. Let's get our fingernail behind here and pull this retention tab off. And then we should be able to remove this MIPI cable. I might need to get in here with like a screwdriver or something to pop it off. There we go. So now the original camera is removed and this starts to get us to one of those disappointing little caveats about the camera, although not the major one, which I'm still gonna hold to the end of the video. Uh, and that is that it's not gonna work. This DVR is not gonna work with any camera other than the Runcam Phoenix HD. Well, they call it the Split HD, but it's a very similar camera to the Phoenix HD. You'll see the image in just a, just a second. Um, it doesn't work. So if you've got a Caddx Polar and you love its low light performance, too bad, can't work, doesn't work. Uh, and that's very different from analog DVRs, which work with pretty much any camera that you've got. And that really matters with DJI, because as you probably know, some DJI cameras are 60 FPS, which means that they have higher latency of about 35 to 40 milliseconds, perhaps under real world conditions, compared to the 120 FPS cameras, which have 25 to 30 milliseconds latency, perhaps under real world conditions. And a lot of people feel that the 120 FPS cameras are where it's at. If you're not particularly latency sensitive, and especially if you are mostly flying like up above the treetops throughout the sky, like a cruiser or even a fixed wing, that, that those 60 FPS cameras are fine. But if you're focused more on proximity freestyle or racing, you probably want the 120 FPS cameras and they will not work. No cameras will work with this DVR other than this exact run cam camera. And guess what? Do you think this is a 60 FPS or a 120 FPS camera? You can tell from my face that it's a 60 FPS camera. So the run cam split HD DVR is going to come in and connect to the Vista right where the camera used to be. And I'm not going to be able to do this on camera without like getting down there and squinting. So I'll just do that in a second. Uh, and what that means is that the camera is feeding its signal into the DVR, and then the DVR is feeding its signal into the VTX, and then the signal is going out. Any latency of the DVR is going to add up, and, and it'll increase the latency of the link. Now the Split HD is hooked up to the Vista VTX, but we're not done yet. Next, we have to power it, and that's what this pigtail, which comes pre-soldered to the unit, is for. Uh, the MIPI cable that goes to the VTX does carry some power because it powers the camera, but I guess it's not enough power to power the whole DVR. And key point, the split HD must be powered from 5 volts, not from VBAT. You can't feed it VBAT. Runcam says that it draws about 450 milliamps max. So depending on what else you're running off your 5 volt regulator, most flight controllers probably are going to be able to power it without having any problems. If you've got a 1 amp 5 volt regulator, you might run into problems because most, most voltage regulators don't actually make their rated power. So if it says 1 amp, it probably can't really do one amp reliably. But if you've got a 1.5 or higher amp voltage regulator on your flight controller, you can probably solder it right up to your flight controller and be okay. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. A run cam includes this little plug, uh, which we're gonna solder up to the flight controller's five volt output, and then it will just plug right into the VTX. Runcam also includes another set of plugs for the TX and RX wires. The TX and RX wires are not absolutely mandatory, 
uh, but they can allow it to, for example, start and stop recording when you arm the quad. And if you don't hook up the TX and RX wires, you'd have to manually start recording every time. So it's a good idea to do that. Alrighty, and then for the data connection, we're just going to get... We've got T3 and R3 right here. Any spare UART will do. We'll solder that up. And as far as the colors go, uh, someone famously once said electricity doesn't care what color wire it's in. But for convention, I'm going to use white as T3 uh, on the flight controller. And we'll use green as R3. Oh, that, that kind of works. And then lastly, we've got one more wire to solder to the VTX. I'm just going to stick this here temporarily while I'm soldering. The TX and the RX wires are here. That's where those pads go. And remember, we have to reverse them. TX on the flight controller goes to RX on the uh, VTX or the DVR and vice versa. So white goes to TX on the flight controller. So it's going to go to RX on the VTX or the DVR and vice versa for the... There we go. Okay. Well, folks, I got to say, I struggled a little bit to find the best way to mount this. Uh, the way I've seen other people do it is with the SD card facing down against the carbon. Uh, and I, when I mounted it that way, I didn't like it because, uh, number one, you need a spacer to get these electronics away from the carbon. Uh, and number two, it kind of crimped the SD card slot a little bit. So the SD card was hard to get in and out. And you need a place to run these wires. So I think what I'm going to do is take the M2 screws and then take the DVR and put it with the heat sink side down against the carbon. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It'll help get the heat out of it. And it's safe to have the heat sink touching the carbon directly. I'm going to put the nylon nuts. I'm going to put at least one set of nylon nuts on as a spacer to give a place for the wires to go and to give the SD card slot room to be happy. Then the SD card holder, a little retention tab is gonna go on here and we'll put the nuts on top of it. Oh my God, line up. Come on, there we go. Yeah, that's where that goes. I got two nuts on top of there, great. And then these wires are going to route through here. And let's try not to get them stuck on top of the SD card holder slot. Give them extra room. And the Vista. I think we're going to need this wire here between the DVR and the Vista to just pass through here so that the Vista can have the antenna connector coming out the back as it usually does. And then that's going to go down there, and uh, we're really going to need another set of screws, uh, nuts at least, as a spacer, just to make sure we have enough space there for those wires. Um, but we we need that spacer anyway for the MIPI cable between the between the DVR and the Vista, so. I don't think we're actually losing anything here. So when all is said and done, here's the way that seemed the best to me to mount it. Uh, to have the metal heatsink of the DVR facing the carbon. And then in the stack, we've got at least two nuts worth of spacers, which if you carefully route the wires, you can avoid crushing the wires and it works. Uh, all of the wires, including the wire from the DVR to the VTX, get passed through here and then come out this side. Uh, you've got plenty of screw length here for an extra spacer if you had an extra uh, nut. By the way, these are all eight of the nuts that come with the kit, so I've had to use my own uh, M2 Nylock nuts. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to pick up a set of those. I bought a set specifically for mounting Vistas because the regular nuts tend to come loose. So you're going to need to source your own M2 nuts or washers or spacers if you go this way. And then, of course, the Vista on top. And the reason that we pass the wires through like we did is that on the Vista, the Vista has to have the UFL connector and the antenna coming out the rear. Otherwise, how are you going to mount the antenna? Which means that the Vista... Yeah, so that's, that, that's how it works out. And that is what seems like to me the best way to do it. You could also, if you had a 20 millimeter or a 25 millimeter stack, just mount 
the DVR here on top of the flight controller, theoretically, and that could also keep the wiring simpler. But let's, uh, let's power it up and see if it works. In order to configure the settings on the camera, you're going to use the RunCam app on your smartphone. Uh, the RunCam app is available from your regular app store. When we start it up, we will select the RunCam Split HD device and hit the QR configuration button. From here, we can set all of the options of the camera, including video quality, whether we want loop recording. You should have an SD card large enough that loop recording won't be an issue. Auto record on power up, heck yes please. Resolution, 2.7K60 or 2.7K60 4.43 if you prefer. We'll do, why not 2.7K43, yeah. Uh, volume, FPV, it's gonna record audio. Shutter speed, we can leave it at auto and ISO sensitivity. We can leave it at, I'm gonna lock that at 400, that's what I like to do. Um, let's see, any general settings? Date stamp, no. Flip screen, no. Saturation, we'll leave that on medium for now, just to see what it comes up with. We'll leave all the settings on medium. And power on automatically is on. Let's see if that sticks after I make these settings. The last thing we're gonna do is hit apply, and that will generate a QR code. And that is how we get the settings into the camera. So the camera doesn't have, it's not controlled or accessed via Wi-Fi. Uh, rather, what we do is, we power it on, obviously. And then after it's powered up, and you can see here it is recording by this blinking red light. I'm just gonna press once to stop the recording. And now that it is not recording, I'm going to double press this button. One, two. Stop recording, please. Double click. No. Stop recording. Slower click. There we go. It was too quick. It was clicking too fast. Show it the. Show it the. There we go. It got it. It got it. It definitely picked it up. Hey there, folks. Joshua from the future here. I just noticed something really interesting. Do you see on the DJI Smart Controller that the image coming from the Split HD is 4:3 aspect ratio? And this is a 60 FPS camera. All other DJI 60 FPS cameras only operate in 16-9 aspect ratio. This one not only records in 4.3, but apparently when you set it to 2.7K 4.3, it also transmits 4.3 back to the goggles. Here's the field of view of the camera when it is set in 2.7K 4.3. And sure enough, this looks like it is actually a native 4.3 sensor. Look how much vertical field of view we're getting. And here is the field of view you get when you're in 16.9 mode. Yup, this appears to be a 4.3 sensor and you are truly getting the full vertical field of view that you get from a 4.3 DJI camera. This is the only 60 FPS DJI camera that can do that. It does mitigate one of the downsides, but not the major downside. Now, quite often when I review a freestyle quad, I have to make some excuse for why my piloting is not world-class. I think I'm better than average, but not world-class. And this time, I have probably the best excuse I've ever had for flying timidly, and that is the latency of this link, which is terrible, and it's going to be a deal-breaker for a lot of people. Bear in mind that the latency of a 60 FPS DJI camera is between 35 and 45 milliseconds under typical flight conditions, and maybe a little higher, but as you get to the point where you're about to fail safe anyway. The RunCam DVR adds about 30 milliseconds to that, so your latency of your video link is between 65 and 75 milliseconds, and that is... I mean, you can fly it, you can see me here start, to, okay, I'm gonna try to freestyle a little bit. It, it, you can kind of do it, but it's bad. It's bad. It feels very disconnected. And it's, I mean, I'm helped by the fact that I know this property like the back of my hand, but as soon as you get into any kind of proximity stuff, it is just really holding you back. This latency would be fine for something like a cruiser where you're not gonna do a lot of proximity stuff or a fixed wing. It certainly is, you could bring it in for a landing, you could have adequate control, but anybody who's doing any serious freestyle or racing is just gonna skip this, in my opinion. And RunCamp's position, I asked him about it, their position is that this is intended for smaller quads where you just don't have the option to get an HD camera on there, like a, a naked GoPro or an Insta360 Go 2 or something like that. Maybe, maybe you could argue that this is okay for use on like a CineWhoop with Real Steady Go. We'll tell you a look at Real Steady Go in just a second. Um, 
if you're okay with the image quality that you're getting, if you could use that. Maybe, but no. If you're doing like any kind of racing or freestyle proximity stuff, this latency, I mean, the 35 to 45 milliseconds of the DJI system is, in my opinion, barely acceptable only because the image quality is so amazing. This 65, 75 milliseconds just completely takes the fun out of it. I would never choose this over the goggle DVR for any kind of proximity or fast flying. <sighs> There's two other gotchas I got to point out before we get to the conclusions of this video. And one is that the onboard recording does not seem to stay in sync with the goggle DVR. And I'm not really sure why? I mean, presumably the goggle DVR is correct because it's like just literally being recorded by the goggles as it comes in. And I don't know, but you can see that they're not playing back at the same speed at all. So the next thing I did was I manually stretched the files to make them the same speed and just to check to see if they stayed in sync. I had to speed up the DVR by about 10% or slow down the onboard recording by about 10% to get them to match up. And once I did that, they did seem to basically stay in sync. The last thing to tell you is that I ran into a situation where if I hit something hard and caused the motors to surge while I was flying, uh, I got a stuttering repeating frame in the DVR, uh, in the goggles. And basically I had to power cycle the quad to get it to recover. Obviously, if you were flying, this would result in a crash. Uh, my best guess is that this is not specifically the fault of the split HD, but that the five volt regulator on this flight controller is not up to snuff and is browning out. So you will definitely want to do a test like you see me doing here. Uh, don't just disarm and drop the quad. I wasn't able to reproduce the issue when the quad was disarmed. It's specifically the surge of the motors that seemed to cause the issue. So while you're armed, let the quad come down and hit the ground hard and bounce a couple times and make sure that this doesn't happen to you before you go commit to flying and trying to go ham. So that brings us to the end of the video and as always the question, should you buy it? And I think that there are going to be some people for whom the answer to this question is yes, but not as many as I hoped when I first heard about this product. Because when I first heard about this product, I imagined that it would be a DVR for DJI that could be used with any DJI camera. And that's not the case. Now, maybe the reason that RunCam only allows it to be used with their camera is because their camera is outputting a 2.7K signal. It's higher resolution, whereas all the other DJI cameras are outputting 1080 signals. So at least you're getting something in exchange for locking you in to the RunCam camera. Fair enough. The image quality of the RunCam camera is acceptable. I don't think it's the best of any camera. I felt the same way about the RunCam Phoenix HD. The best is clearly either the Nebula or the Cadex Nebula Pro or the original DJI camera. But it's not bad. It's certainly usable and a lot of people would choose it in order to get the DVR. Now, the people who I think are going to really like this product are people who want that onboard DVR. They want to be able to use Gyroflow. They want to be able to get good, high-quality recordings, not GoPro quality, but good enough, especially people looking for micros. And by the way, if you are looking for micros, there have been rumors that Cadex, or that uh, sorry, RunCam is going to make a 14-millimeter nano-sized version of this as well to put maybe on your toothpick, three-inch toothpicks or something. Hmm, we shall see. But the killer, the killer that is going to keep a lot of people away from this is the latency. That's right on the edge of what I consider flyable. And frankly, that takes this from being, hey, do you want to DVR your DJI? Maybe with a little bit of extra weight, you could do it. That takes this from that to, eh, it's probably not worth it for most people because of that stupid latency. And let's remember... If you buy the original air unit, now known as the air unit micro, you get a DVR that works with the 120 FPS cameras that give you the low latency. Works. Because they got the SD card slow error, which means it kind of doesn't work either. But if DJI ever fixed that problem, it would. 
if you are one of the people for whom the Runcam Split HD is the best product for you, then there are links down in the video description. And those are affiliate links. Uh, that means, in case you're new here, that when you click that link and you make any purchase at the affiliated store, I get a small commission. It's an easy way for you to help support the channel. Just click the link, do your shopping, buy anything. Don't have to buy this product. It's just anything you buy at the store after clicking the link, I get a percentage of and it. It really helps me out. Um, what do you think? What do you think? I really felt disappointed by some of the drawbacks of this product. Maybe I got my hopes too high. And if I hadn't got my hopes too high, I would have been more happy with what I got. But this was less than I expected. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Am I, am I missing out? Do you love this product? Will you be buying the shit out of it? Or uh, do you basically agree with me? Let me know in the comments. I'm always eager to hear what, uh, what people think. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Patrons are the people who make all this possible. Not to disrespect you, cause you're watching all the way to the end, which really helps the analytics. So I guess without you watching, none of this would be possible. But if you would subscribe or join my Patreon, $2 a month or more, it's up to you. Or at the very least, you know, leave a comment or click the affiliate links and do the show. Isn't it a beautiful day? Man, the lighting looks good out here. What's up, y'all? Out for a walk.